So, Brother Nathaniel, what is your background and upbringing? All right, my background is I was raised as a Jew. I'm racially a Jew. Both my father and mother, you know, are Jews. We're Jews. They're not longer here. And uh, I was raised in a synagogue, Sabbath school, Hebrew school, very traditional home, a very strong Judeo scenario. How many generations back does that go for well, you? your family? It goes back, here's the, I'll tell you by, by a story. Rabbis come up to me all the time because I look Jewish and they see I have wearing a cross, okay? All right. They see how I'm dressed. Mm-hmm. So they come up and they say, your mother Jew? They start with that. Okay, because they trace uh, the race from the mother. And I say, yeah, oh, yeah, my mother Jew, (laughs) 10 generations back, my father Jew, 10 generations back. We did a family tree. Now they're ready to talk to me. (laughs) That's funny, really. What takes um, a practicing Jewish person from a Jewish family you know, to where you're at today, your, your beliefs right, today. You know, the that's, a hard, was, that's a hard transition, what? right? That's a hard transition, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But for me, it, it worked because in my bar mitzvah class when I was 12, preparing for, you know, when I was going to turn 13 to be bar mitzvah, my teacher, Mr. Schechter, in Sabbath school, decided she was going to show us why Judaism was the superior religion, not for, not for anyone else, but for us. So she taught us every religion under the sun. I mean, religions that we never heard of in that time, Baha'i, Zen, we never heard of these things in 1962. But she refused to teach Christianity. So she gets up at the end of the class. I still see her. She was built like a bull, Mrs. Schechter, and says, uh, children, we're supposed to be adults by now, children, we're not going to study Christianity because it's a fairy tale. <laughs> and it was invented by a self-hating Jew named Saul who hated his Jewishness so much he changed his name to Paul. <laughs> All right, wow. so I raised my hand. I said, well, after 2,000 years of Western civilization, I was a smart kid. How could this be a fairy tale? <laughs> Did all these people over 2,000 years believe in a fairy tale? (laughs) She says, I'm here to teach you. You're not here to teach us. (laughs) That was the end of the discussion. All right, so as a kid 12 years old, I'm thinking, come on. I mean, (laughs) why do we have to be narrow-minded and close-minded? If we're Jews and enlightened, shouldn't we be a little more open-minded about things? So I decided from then on, Okay, because we I was forbidden to read the New Testament at home. I was determined when I get out of this synagogue, when I go to college, I'm going to read the New Testament myself. So I did, but I when I went to college in California, far away from Pittsburgh where I grew up, and I opened up the New Testament and I read the gospel according to St. Matthew, and just by the genealogies that traces the the, 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 the descendants of Jesus Christ with all these Jewish names, <laughs> that convinced me. <laughs> Just the genealogies. <laughs> but I, I, I kept on reading, 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 and then I said, yes, Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. Then I called my rabbi and all hell blo- broke loose. <laughs> yeah. Sure. What, what made it uh, the 18 inches from your head, though, where you mentally figured that out? To where you were a, a, a changed person inside, where it became a real living reality. Well, I think it was because when I went to visit my grandmother soon after that bar mitzvah encounter, class encounter, the rabbi comes from visiting my grandmother, who was uh, you know, ill, okay? And was she going to die? You know, it, this was kind of scary for me. And I love my grandmother. We were very close. So the rabbi comes uh, out of the elevator in the hotel lobby, and I said, uh, Mr. Schechter won't teach us about Christianity. We should learn about Jesus Christ. And he spits on the hospital floor. Okay, I'm a kid 12 years old, and he's spitting on the hospital floor, the rabbi. He says, don't you ever use that word unless you use it as a curse word. 
I said, oh, wait, and I didn't say anything to him. I was, I, I still was, I couldn't get over the shock of him spitting on a, on a hospital floor. And this made such an impact on me that I think I needed another great impact. And reading the gospel according to St. Matthew, which is very rare, because he keeps on referring back to the Old Testament prophecies, which I knew, but never understood. It was like a light bulb going off in my mind that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, that Messiah would come before the destruction of the second temple, that the Messiah would conquer death. I mean, it was like a light bulb going off in me. And that changed my life, Ken. Yeah, it changed my life. Uh, we got an airport here. Now there's an helicopter. Are they coming after you? Wow, that looks like an army. You know, it's, I think the army trains here once in a while. Anyways, <laughs> they're not coming after me. <laughs>